funnily enough, it doesn't mention that a shocking amount of his ex-presenters turned out to be sex offenders. Hi, it's me again, and another week and another story about something failing at the BBC. We've had news, we've had dramas, we've had soap operas, and now BBC Radio is making the news for not being very good. It's losing presenters and losing audience left, right and centre. It's good, isn't it? Let's have a look. A lot of noise has come out of Broadcasting House this month, and not all of it has been harmonious. The static started last week when figures published by the radio ratings body, Rajar, showed that commercial stations are clocking up more listener hours than the BBC in the early summer for the first time in almost 25 years. Almost like the one argument for BBC Radio is that it doesn't have adverts playing between the songs and the talking. doesn't really matter anymore because people don't care about adverts nowadays. It's almost like their one argument for keeping it has, has gone out the window, hasn't it? Weird. Last weekend, BBC Radio 5 Live scrapped its classified football results service on Saturday afternoons, and then attention then turned to strife at Radio 2 after Paul O'Grady announced that his Sunday afternoon show would be his last. So they've lost Paul O'Grady, which is one of their big names. Not a big fan myself, but I accept he was a big name. Vanessa Feltz has recently quit presenting for Radio 2, hasn't she? Steve Wright has, uh, I don't know if he was quit or if he was pushed. I think he was pushed, wasn't he? He's gone. All the big names have gone. So where is the argument? Where is the argument for this? It makes no sense, does it? Matt Deegan, an influential consultant and creative director at Folder Media, whose clients have included BBC and commercial stations, says, I think the danger for the BBC is that if commercial keeps picking off listeners, the licence fee comes under more pressure. Now, as I said, the one argument they have, well, they had two arguments, didn't they, that they keep pushing. One is their independent and trusted news, and the other one, it's commercial free. You can watch it without commercials. But if you watch... BBC stations as they're being broadcast, between the shows, they have a couple of minutes of idents for other shows or other stuff they're pushing. It's no different to showing ads. And BBC Radio is hemorrhaging listeners, hemorrhaging listeners. And a lot of it is to do with BBC being crap. And the other thing is to do with the choice again. There's too much choice. On your phone, plugged into your car, you can listen to any radio station from anywhere in the world or specialist radio stations servicing just the thing that you like most. You don't have to listen to general radio anymore, and the BBC is struggling to keep up. I know it's got its BBC sounds and stuff like that, but traditionally the people who listen to radio in their car and that on the way to work aren't using BBC sounds. They're using BBC local radio, and they're dumping it. They're dumping it in their droves. So the one, the one thing they had to keep radio you know, paid for by the licence fee, people liking it, people believing that it's value for money, was that there's no ads, but more people are leaving to listen to commercial station. So the argument's gone again. The BBC is largely still trying to please much wider audiences and, due to the terms of its charter, must approach a sort of universality. Yet this need to be all things to all people has fueled the sense of an identity crisis at Radio 2 in particular. As the boomer generation gets older, the BBC got nervous about the gap between Radio 1 and Radio 2 and tried to bring the average age of Radio 2 listeners down. Which you can see the point in them attempting, because the older listeners aren't going to be here forever, are they? And they need to bring the younger generation in to go through the realms of radio. You start on BBC Radio 1, don't you? Move up to Radio 2, and then you finish your days listening to Radio 4. Don't you? But no one's doing it anymore. You, go, you get an app on your phone, and you can listen to radio stations from all around the world that cater for exactly your tastes. And no one needs local radio for traffic anymore, because it's built into your car, it's built into your phone. I don't, see, I don't see the argument for BBC stations anymore. The one argument they had was the lack of commercials. And it seems, it seems no one cares. So things are just falling apart, left, right and centre for the BBC, aren't they? Every week's a different story about something they've done that's traditional, that's failing, because they are not moving with the times quick enough. And it's going to be the end of them. It's going to be the end of them, isn't it? Let me know what you think about it down in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. And that way, hopefully, I'll see you in another video again soon when I... Ta-da.